G'day and welcome back for more Scrapyard Survival. And my place around here is, uh, let's say, pretty untidy. I feel like I've got a whole bunch of stuff all over the place. I haven't started doing any of the organization that I've talked about previously. And it might be nice to get that done, particularly as I've been talking about having some guests over or doing a few things. So I should probably at least tidy up what stuff I think I can do in a relatively short amount of time. So the stuff that I'm thinking about doing is basically organizing a little bit of the space in here. And to begin with, I think what I should be doing is finding the right thing on my hotbar, which is this. And I should be getting some light in here. Now the neon tubes are not to be the light in there. What the neon tubes are for is to attach the lights that will be in here. So what I'm thinking is... Oh yeah, there's no perfect center point. Dang it! <laughs> uh, what I had been thinking was centering this over the doors, but it's going to have to be off to one side and then I'm going to have to pick a side for the middle one. Oh. I don't want to have to do that. <laughs> um... What is another option I could use here? No, I think these look nicest anyway. So we'll just... Oh, actually, no. If I pick this side... On... This side of the warehouse, like as in move it towards the center on this side, and move it towards the center on this side, I can maybe just get away with the two rows of lights. And that's it. Which actually perfectly fits in with my idea around having... Um, three rows of stacked goods because then I'll have lights perfectly over the two drivable rows and none elsewhere which makes a lot of sense and now what type of light to use do I use an interior light with its weird bit that sticks behind it or do I use something gigantic <laughs> like a light panel uh, the light panel actually wouldn't look too weird or so I put corner lights up here and place them this way. Like place two, say one there, one there, with them hanging out sideways. It might go the corner lights. I may regret that, given the distance that their light can go, but uh, let's see. Now obviously I'm going to need a way to get up there. Uh, and... I don't have any sort of cherry picker design or anything like that that I can use at the moment, so this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm just going to build a ramp. Let's, I'll just get rid of later. I'll just get rid of later. And apparently throw blocks in random spots too. So that's what's happening today. Turn my lights off. Grab this and let's put it up to maximum. Let's see how that feels. Ooh. Doesn't... Wait, no, that's the outside one. Oh, it doesn't reach out if, here at all. What if I do a cheeky... And we... Mess with the offset. Just a little bit. Yeah, it's still not going to reach far enough. Although, it is kind of nice to have that interest to the way that the light is playing around inside this warehouse. I think from a practicality perspective, I've got to choose either the interior light or the light panel. So let's do a panel. See how I feel about it. Because these go out to 20 meters, so it's a lot more light. Like if this is at its max, I kind of don't need more than a few in here. But I'm not going to go out to max. I'm going to go out to just inside our wall here. So I don't want it bleeding through. Go to there. Or I reduce the fall off and then go a bit further. Like that. Oh man. It really didn't need much more than the 10 meters that the corner lights go, did it? Just another 2 meters would have been fine. And now... 
Got a little bit of bleed through, but not too much. And I should start having some lighting out here anyway. So that shouldn't be too obvious. How do I feel about having a big panel like that up there? Yeah, I think I'm alright with it. It's not my ideal, but I don't like the... Um, I don't like the backing plate of the interior lights, even though I probably wouldn't be able to see it. I'm going to go with the panels. There is a chance I may replace them with something else later, but we'll see. So let's name this with suit lights off. I can see! So there we go. We have a light in the warehouse. That's going to make it a lot easier to do stuff in here, which is what I'm going to be doing next. Just trying to decide upon a method of organizing things around here. A method of making things uh, tidy. And I'm still <laughs> frustratingly undecided on that. What I had been thinking about for a while was making little pallets and putting, say, with... Uh, let's get the right block first. Say with this hydrogen thruster here, I would put merge block on the bottom of it and then merge block it to the pallet. But the problem with that is if I want to be able to use that merge block and just disconnect it and then move it somewhere else... I can't fit as many blocks on the pallet. And when I've got advanced welding and I can just hold down control and grind things off, that might have been a better way to do it. Also, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I had eight metal grids sitting under my nose this whole time in these hydrogen thrusters that I had completely forgotten about. <sighs> wow. That's just... Wow. One of the things that was suggested that I don't think I'm actually going to do, even though I do in some instances like the idea, I don't think I'm going to have the pallets lock themselves to the wall. I want to have actual shelving systems because I think it'll look interesting to have shelves. Now for shelves, I think I'm pretty limited in how I can set them up. Because of the way these windows actually take up the block inside the wall, I would almost... I, I don't really have a choice but to place it something like this and then have this one like that. So I can still place a pallet underneath and then I can place a row of pallets on top. And I think that'll honestly end up with the size of this warehouse with enough storage for the amount of stuff I have right now and am likely to accumulate. I'm not going to accumulate huge, huge amounts of stuff, but I'd say that now, it may actually happen. <laughs> Could happen. If it happens and I have to redo my storage system, that's fine. I can do a different one then. But for the palette, what I was thinking was grabbing the darker brown from here, maybe even making it a bit brown. Something like this. Starting with full block cubes. Now obviously a pallet is going to look most like a pallet if we do half block cube, half blocks and then plates in between them. I think that would look the best. But it doesn't give me enough attachment points that I need to make this a functional pallet. Because I'm going to work with a 5x5 five five shape here. So what I'm thinking is... You know, up. So that's our five. And then we need to go five across. Now I need to check before I do too much of this, which way the lines on this are going. Because with the half blocks, you can't actually change the way the lines go. They will always go the same way. Which is one of the advantages of the plate. And I want these corrugations to run across the pallet, which means that the edges of the pallet are actually going to be where the current top and bottom with the way this is sitting would be. So I'm going to have to do some little uh, turning this thing around. In fact, I think if I push this out on the voxel, I might have an easier time building it. 
So this is the basic shape of the pallet. We got full cubes along the one side, and we got halves in the middle. That's mainly just, that's mainly for looks, because obviously my telehandler doesn't have forks on it. I'm not going to put forks on this. I know I technically could, and under ideal circumstances, space engineers would handle that just fine. These are not ideal circumstances for <laughs> such physics shenanigans. I think this is a bit too light. Ah, uh, yeah. I think a bit darker. Yeah, that's more like it. So you can see the corrugations are running from the full thick to the full thick, which I think looks a bit nicer. Now, what do I need this thing to do? I need it to be able to lock to a surface. Obviously, it's not going to be locking to the wall, so it's going to be locking to the floor, which is why these are full blocks. So I need to be able to place some land, some mag plates on here, and I'm going to do them in yellow. So I put one, two, three. Oh. But how am I going to control those? And this was the issue that I kind of came to with locking them on the wall. But it's the same problem if I'm locking them to the ground. And I do need to lock these to the ground, I think. Because if I don't lock them to the ground, how do I know that they're going to be safe? Leaving stuff lying around like this, there is always the chance that something on load will go a bit weird and if it's a whole pallet that goes weird that's a whole pallet gone and that's bad I don't want that so what I'm gonna do is actually grind out these two I'm gonna place a connector on both of those the reason for the connector is that I should be able to make an alternate head for my telehandler so I could detach at this hinge that could be the detachment point Probably okay to do that, because I could lock this mag plate down, detach the hinge, reverse, go grab the connector-styled one that's got the right gap for this so that I can lock to both connectors, and then pull it off, and both should be able to lock to something around the back there where I've made the parking area for this. I think that should work. The only thing I'm trying to figure out here is how to make this look good. I'm torn as to whether putting light armor paneling on this will make it look good or look worse. I don't want to put it on the top surface here. The reason I don't want to put it on the top surface here is because that's reducing the surface that I've got to put blocks on. So I'm going to put all the blocks on this top surface and they've got to be merged down to that and stuck to it. Something like that. But maybe on the sides I'll put a bit of hazard. Oh, no. No, we don't do that. <laughs> we do not do that. Those do not align at all. So it's not perfect for what I was imagining. I feel like maybe pushing the connectors out, even though they'll stick out like sore thumbs, they may actually look better. Trying to embed them, I think, was a mistake. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, that's... yeah. That's much better. I know some people may disagree with me on that, but... Uh, it Having them embedded just messed with too many other angles on this thing. Like, having them stick out, sure, looking at it from the side, a bit weird. But every perspective was weird with the other method, so... I'll look at this. There we go. We have a pallet. Sort of. I need to lift it up so I can put those other landing gear back on. Then I need to set it. Oh, can I not move this at all? No. How heavy is a connector? What? Wait a second. Wait a second. How heavy is a connector? Are connectors good ballast? Um. Oh, no, it was just being weird. Oh, oh, right. Yep, okay. So there's a slight problem with my forklift design. I discovered this while I was trying to make the thumbnail. This spotlight. I think it's that spotlight anyway. Yeah. Those spotlights were actually pushing against the pistons and making the whole thing spin. <laughs> if I was uh, trying to get the shot with it at this height, with that other spotlight, it was, uh, yeah, 
Oh, not good. Okay, so if I drop this down a bit, I should be able to hop out. Put those mag plates back on. Set up all of the mag plates to not have auto lock. And I need to put them all in a group. And every pallet I build must have the exact same group so that when I'm controlling the telehandler, when I'm using the connector to do so, I'll be able to lock and unlock those from within the cockpit. The connectors don't matter because I'll be controlling the connectors on the telehandler, not the connectors on the pallets. So what shall I put on my first pallet? What have I got the most of? Probably some of these electronic blocks. And they're pretty easy for me to manhandle too. So what do we have here? Custom turret controllers, yeah. Let's store these, because these I'm not likely to use many of. I don't actually know if I'm likely to use any of them. Do I deliberately make them a bit messy on there? As in all different rotations and things like that. I think I will. Oh. I also should have attached the merge block while this was standing up. Alright, let's get this one locked down. One down. Just move them all over there first so I, so, I, so I can see how many I've got. I think I've got four. Let's stop tripping over the antenna. <laughs> and all of them? Looks like it. We've got those four. Have I got any in any of the uh, unscrapped things out here? You don't have any. You don't have any. Don't think you have any. And I don't think you do either. Okay. No, I do not. This might. But if that's the case, it's keeping it. Oh, Dang it. So there was an alternative option that I considered for these pallets that might have actually been really nice. Because it would have given me an opportunity to do something else for these that I might have liked. So the reason these connectors are here is so that I've got a way to control the mer sorry, the mag plates, I was about to say merge blocks, the mag plates on the bottom of the pallet. Because I can then connect up to them, provide power, so that I can communicate with those blocks. The alternative option that I considered was putting a small battery on each pallet, and then using that battery to allow me to have buttons on the pallet, so then I could just leave this thing as a basic telehandler without anything fancy on it and it wouldn't need the connector mechanism because then I can just use a button to lock and unlock those mag plates obviously yes I have to get out of my cockpit then which is a bit more annoying but not too big a deal but the nice thing that a battery would have enabled would have been getting rid of one of one or more of these little panels and putting an LCD there with a name saying what the pallet contains <laughs> Because I'm just looking around here and I'm like, that's going to be awkward. Although, maybe not as awkward as I'm thinking. Because if I do have shelves, the shelves could have the LCDs, corner LCDs on them. Like if I have this over here, maybe this is actually better. And I go corner LCD, on the flat one. Flat top. Yeah, actually, that's heaps better. Because then I don't. Then I don't also. Then I also avoid the problem of the battery running out because the LCD is on all the time. Yeah. Yeah, that's much better. <laughs> Good. Crisis averted. I'm happy again. I feel like I made the right choice. Until I read the comments after this video goes out and people tell me where I stuffed it up. <laughs> so I'm sure I'm sure there's an opportunity I missed here that I didn't consider that might have worked better thankfully though I think I've picked an option that will work even if it's not perfect even if it's not the best option I could have picked the other nice thing about what I've done here and doing things this way is I can still lock these down before I build the telehandler that can lock them down from the cockpit. Or the attachment for the current one. Come on, really? 
How could you be any closer? Come on. What? What? Why? Lock to the merge block. Why are you being like this? Fine. Fix if I rebuild you? Yes. Of course it does. Cool. I have my custom turret controllers on a pallet. Let's move it into the corner. And then I'll probably go with my hydrogen tanks. Oh, uh, maybe I'll keep going with my electronics for a bit. Oh, can't put that too far in the corner because then I'm not going to be able to actually grab onto it when I get the proper connector. That's got to go at least a little bit out. There we go. Cool. One pallet done. Many more to go. But I'll get there. I will get there. Okay, I have made some progress. I'm about to do a pallet of my atmospheric thrusters that I've got here. See how many of them I can get on there without having to use a crane to do it. I've got my programmable blocks here. I've got the automaton style and the traditional style. I've got my event controllers on this one. My custom turret controllers on this one. I've got hydrogen thrusters on this one. It's a slow process, but it's the sort of thing that Honestly, I kind of, I'm kind of enjoying do, <laughs> doing. Um, I think I'm enjoying the results more than the doing, maybe. Uh, no, I am, I'm definitely enjoying the results. Uh, the doing is actually quite fun when it, when you get into a bit of a rhythm of it and it seems to be flowing a bit more nicely. Although so far I have been sticking a little bit with the, uh, Let's say the easier blocks, the ones that I can manhandle myself. Having to crane up these thrusters is something that does seem like it might be required. Although I was hoping to avoid it. All right, I have failed epically attempting to get the thrusters onto the thing without any sort of mechanical assistance. So I need to move this truck. And we're going to try and use the telehandler to do its thing. Thing. Can it do what I need it to do? What I need it to do being uh, move a thruster or two onto this platform, being the pallet, without it taking me three years to move them up. <laughs> Let's grab one. That's kind of one of its other roles here, or a forklift's role was going to be, being able to do stuff like this quickly. The sort of stuff that I would either potentially mess around with the grabby hands for ages or just give up and go and use the crane. But I want a way to do that stuff more quickly. And it does look like this is going to be fairly quick and flexible. So that's one. Should probably merge block them down one at a time. So I'm thinking for thrusters, I'm a little bit limited in how I can arrange them on here. Because they're three blocks by one by one, and this is five by five, I can put them in a row along the middle and have five of them across there and then do another five and maybe stop there. Maybe ten on a pallet is enough. Or I can try and put some on the ends and do like a cross of them across it. But I'm thinking of just keeping it fairly simple and I'm gonna make it just a line of them across the middle here to do that I might just grind off these panels temporarily merge block there and merge block like that cool and one down ten to go or something I've got quite a few and then when I decide I'm actually gonna build something with them undo this whole process all right let's get this triple on i'm just going to go with the basic row so i need to get these near the outside come around this side or at least i need to get them near the outside if i want to make my stacking process relatively easier that should do 
this this is a, this is just working it it's just working i'm i'm not struggling against it it's not struggling against me it's all just working this is great plus i'm i'm tidying up i'm actually getting things cleaned up around here I have no idea what I'm going to do in terms of storage for big blocks like this drill. That I still haven't figured out. So... Yeah, do I make bigger pallets that sit outside? I don't know. Like, do I do a 10 by 10 in small grid for the, for the drills, for the engines, for the oxygen tanks, for the big thrusters? And large grid blocks I probably should just lock down on the base but don't have many of the big blocks so I could possibly just put them in one like put them together in a bit of a pile for the moment and figure out the storage of them at another time like obviously I've got three drills now I've got a two O2H2 gens so there is a little bit to store around and then larger small grid batteries obviously they need to be stored too although that one's probably just going to come straight out and get put onto this helicopter to be fair and the other two that are in the old forklift. We'll need to do something with them as well. But it is going well. It is going very well. Alrighty, last thruster. I've actually got 11 of them. Didn't realize. Should probably start thinking about making something that flies. But I'm going to need a whole lot of... A whole lot more metal grids before I can do that. Let's put this one... So what have I got? I've got electronics on this side at the moment. And I've got thrusters over there. So yeah, the Atmo thrusters can go next to that one. With the hydrogen thrusters on it for the moment. Okay, let's take it inside. Okay, let's <laughs> take it inside. Take two. There we. Go. I may actually, I may actually not need to have three rows of storage here. I could probably have row of storage along each side and along the back wall with a bit of a gap between the side stacks and the back wall stack and that could give me a nice open area to move around in the middle which could be a better way of doing it and could still look cool because obviously that's really important it's got to look cool there we go thruster pallets and because i still don't have the attachment for the telehandler i can just go into here Grab the mag plates and lock. Same with this one. I don't think I've locked any of them actually. So let's go do that with all of these. Yeah. Let's go park you before I end up leaving you idle and run out of power. Ring goes up. 406. Oh, and good timing too. Because it is almost daylight. That is a good time for looting. I mean, salvaging. Some of you being somewhat eagle-eyed might have noticed this little addition to my base. It was in a different spot when someone added it, but it was right in the way of the path that I take my telehandler through, so I ground it down and moved it. I was sent some mail. Which... Yes. Well, I was sent some spam. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there are a couple of different mailbox designs that were added as a mod to the server. Uh, we got that one, or we got this one. So I was thinking I might have both and people can choose which one to put stuff in. But to be able to send mail, you need to be able to make data pads, and I changed the survival kit to be able to make it from scrap metal. So your scrap metal that you find around the place, or you create around the place when you blow something up uh you can easily make a data pad from that and drop it at someone's house so anyone who wants to drop something by here or message and things like that can do so and we can hopefully uh you know it's a nice way to leave a message for someone without having to put up an lcd or something like that that's what we all thought when it was being talked about initially Right, need to pack enough stuff for a few merge blocks. Then, hook up the trailer. 
Oh. I was not expecting that to work so nicely. Is that going to attach? Am I going to do horrible things if it does attach? It is going to attach and it is not going to do horrible things. Bonus. Whoops. Alright, I'm going to head east-ish because it's going to be lighter that way and see if I spot something. Oh. Uh. Huh. huh? Wait. What is over there? That's... Okay, one, how did I get lucky and actually head almost directly towards something? Two, that's real spread out. There's a lot there. No, I don't know. I lost that. I'm busy. <laughs> what am I looking for? What are my goals here? I guess... I do eventually want to have something that can fly, and there's a part of me that would be tempted at the point I get something to, fl to fly to leave the crane at home and just take out a flatbed truck with a flyer stationed on it that can just lift stuff onto the truck. And then I drive back and go out again and do that repeatedly. But I don't know, but I don't think I've got enough metal grids to make that happen, unfortunately. Check out all the things to see whether they've got like, computers and bits and pieces that I might want. But I don't think there's anything I want to take whole here. I don't see any blocks jumping out at me. Since I've now got the large grid, large cargo container, I don't have to worry about small. the smaller cargo containers on large grid. I guess it's mainly medium cargoes for small grid that I'm keen on, or a large cargo for small grid. Nothing in that. Nothing in that. Nothing in here. Take the computers out of the door, though. Especially with my pallets actually using up 12 computers. 12? How many is it? Uh, eight computers each. I'm going to need a few more computers to make sure that I can keep making new pallets for new blocks and things if I want to keep adding more. Just realized something I should do. I want to put some windows into the ceiling of the warehouse, especially now that the warehouse is looking a bit more complete. So I'm going to need to take all this glass. Whoops. Did not realize those were load-bearing windows. And instead of climbing up to meet the scrap, I'm bringing the scrap down to meet me. There we go. Nice 20 computers in that sorter. And we're done. And we're done. And... Hmm. Done. Good. Good and done. I was... Trying to say one of those, and then I said both. We're good. Yes. Okay, I see something 4.36 k's away. Let's go. Oh. Is that someone's, or is that scrap? That looks like scrap, I think. Think. Alright, so what have I got here? A split apart truck with some hydrogen tanks in it. Shed full of sand. And a medium cargo container. Nice. I will take you. Now, I will open up the door. I will take you. I will probably get that battery too. Oh, two metal grids. Nice. Power cells in one of those cargo containers. Got some power cells and yeah, nothing else. Exciting. I guess I should be looking for stuff in scrap that might make for uh, a useful item as a kind of a competition item. Although I was predominantly thinking of using stuff that was largely inert and not using actual expensive blocks. Because otherwise I gotta go out and find those expensive blocks. And then if someone breaks it, it's all awkward. Nothing good in here? Nope. Alright, let's see if there's anything in these lockers. Ooh. Ah! Another tier 2 welder. Tier 3 welder. 
Bunch of oxygen bottles. That was another decent welder. Yeah, I just got two. Huh. Inventory full. No, um, no power cells, which is why I what I've been finding in a lot of these service stations, but still. A couple of tools, not bad. Alright, let's get the stuff up on top. Ah, load it up and away we go. Oh. Uh, what is that? Oh, it's a pipe thing. Uh, do they have any computers in them? Oh, uh, my southwest. No computers in that one. And not in that one. West, southwest, here we go. Now, oh, that is mountains. I don't really want to go to mountains. Oh, yep. See a tiny little bit of scrap. That's what I've spotted. I think it's one of the things I turned into my scout vehicle that I drove so terribly. And yes, it is. Is there anything on here that I am particularly in need of at the moment? I know it's got computers in a few bits, so I'll grab those. Don't need a hydrogen engine. That is a pair of programmable blocks and an antenna. Grab those. I might even see if I can pick up this pair of an uh, remote. I might see. I can grab these with their block attaching behind them. It looks like I can pick that up, so that's good. Onto the trailer we go. Yep. Cool. Alright. On I go. Guess I can turn around and then head back the way I came around over to here. I think I spot something in the storm, but I it could be my eyes deceiving me. Oh no, there's something there. What on earth is it? What on Satrius is it? A hangar? Maybe? Oh yeah, it is. What have you got for me? Ooh. Ooh. We got some solar panels for the first time. That's potentially exciting. Have you got any... <gasps> 15 metal grids? Yes. Gimme, gimme, gimme. And I'll take your ammo too. Oh, that's exciting. Oh. That is also potentially exciting. Small hydrogen tank. I'm going to need some of that sort of stuff for storage. In the distant future. Now, how do I want to go about these solar panels? Because that's two fully functional ones and one non-functional one. And I don't think I've picked up any solar cells from anywhere yet. Large grid hydrogen engine. I do not need you. I have plenty of renewable power. I don't want to be using hydrogen power, so let's get rid of you. And there's a small cargo container here, but I don't need that, so... Inventory Goodbye. Ooh, full. you got stuff in the, the, the I want though. Let's that up. More power cells to replace the batteries that I broke. My southwest. Anything in you? No. Oh. Uh, there was a heavy Inventory metal full. plate thing on top of that that had a bunch of grids in it. I just got more grids. How many grids have I got? Two, eight, twenty-three. Oh yeah, that's awesome. I'm also carrying a whole bunch of junk on me, which I do not need to be carrying. Let's ditch that in. Hopefully an empty cargo. No. Am I already full? I am full. Huh. I was expecting that wheel to just pop off then. Give me a little bit by surprise. 23 metal grids from one trip, though. It's awesome. Oh, there's a little battery in here. Okay, so 
how to release these. I think what I'll do is I'll put my crane underneath, grab hold of the solar panels, climb up on top, and cut them free. I hope, especially since this is full of cargo, I hope that I will have enough mass that to not get messed up by that. And we're locked on. Hopefully that lock persists after these stop being the same grid. That's the bit that can go a little bit wrong with this sort of approach. Full. Okay, here goes. I think this is the last connection. Inventory full. Inventory full. Hey, that looks good. Hey, hey. How do I get it out now? <laughs> I didn't think that far through. Um, guess we retract as far as I can. And then I do a little bit of that. And if I turn my park brake off and I turn, hopefully I can drive away slowly, maybe. All right, let's try this. I need to swing it around a bit further. Drive a bit further forward. Looks like it's just gonna knock it and we're clear. I now have a solar hat. Now how am I gonna lock this onto the trailer? Uh, let's try first off putting the park brake on. Then, I have an idea. I'm going to attempt to get this onto one of the rows of blocks on its edge. Oh, I might actually... Oh, yeah. It's three of the four. That'll do. So, on the left-hand side, that is row number three. And on the same on the right. And unlocked. Cool. That's not top-heavy or anything. It'll be fine. It's going to be really annoying for my camera. Oh well. It's also... Uh... Alright, I'm driving home. I just realised what I've done. I've made it impossible for me to get the crane to put anything on the back end of the truck. <sighs> of course I have. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Could move it. But I still think I'm probably best off just going home, dropping this stuff off and getting the next load. Oh, the other reason to go home, obviously, is my cargo is completely full. So I can't collect any more componentry, so I may as well head home anyway. Don't know what I'm going to do with these solar panels. Being large grid, they're less relevant to me. What's that over there? Is that just a pipe? They're less relevant to me than, say, a... Well, than small grid would be. Small grid would be far more useful. Because small grid means I've got power generation on the go. But large grid... I'm not planning on making something large grid that can be on the go. I may just make myself a tracking solar array just because. On the other hand, though. But even if I don't do that, collecting the solar cells from this means I've got more solar cells available to me if I ever do find some small grid solar panels. So, keeping them is useful regardless. Uh, it's just, in what form do I keep them? In what form are they most useful for me? Obviously, with that many wind turbines on my base, I'm not in a big... Like, I'm not likely to run into too much trouble with power. 41 metal grids now. I probably could make a flyer. Hmm... It's a little bit tempting. I'm really liking driving this thing, or having this thing. But if I made a slightly bigger truck that had a bigger tray on it, maybe leaving the crane alone? Oh, but it needs... If I'm going to take something scrapping, it needs cargo. I think that... I think I'm going to leave... Oh, I have enough grids. I could make a flyer, which means I could go flatbed and flyer rather than flatbed and crane picking things up. I'm going to keep mulling that over as I, I love cranes. Cranes are cool. Uh, but a little flyer would 
speed things up significantly. Especially when I get to a point where I'm looking for very specific scrap, which I'm really not at. And I, I, I personally think that once I'm at the point of looking for specific scrap, that's when you really want to fly because you just keep cruising, find what you want, yep, bring it home. You don't find what you want, meh. Just leave it, ignore it. But I do have two large Atmo thrusters, which means I can carry a decent load. If I could find a couple more of those, say if I had four, I can probably have cargo on the flyer. And it's not just able to ca carry a couple of large grid blocks or a single small grid thing. I'd be able to carry more. And I'm a little bit tempted that when I, if I do find a few more, to turn this into my flyer. Or if I manage to find another one, turn it into, turn that one into it, because, well, I've, this one's been a bit more wrecked than the rest. <laughs> but, and then Lee, and I was also thinking of leaving the wheels on it. So it's a flyer with wheels. So if I do start running a little low on power, if I do end up loading it up a bit too much with what I'm carrying, I can just drive home. That's a safety net. Wheels do make flying a little bit awkward. So I may have to uh, go back on that idea. But I'm hopeful I won't have to. I've offloaded all the little bits and pieces that were on the back here. The little batteries, the hydrogen tanks, the pair of programmable locks. And popped them over onto the pallets in there. And I now need to figure out what I'm going to do with these solar panels and where that's going to be done. Should probably hack them to begin with. Best if I... No. Best if I own them. Yeah, I'm not... <laughs> I'm thinking... I'm thinking maybe I'll just stick them as an awning on the outside of this for now. As I think that could be useful enough. Get rid of this... Good, that didn't take any damage. Yeah, I think this I think this side of the roof would be a nice spot to put a bit of a solar awning. I don't really want to set up a tracking array just now. As I kinda of don't need the power. But one, two, three, four. Will fit neatly between where the um the beam blocks are on this. I think that'll be that will look alright. It's fallen dark because while I've been thinking about this and offloading stuff, I was also making a couple more pallets. And I've managed to get even the batteries on pallets, so let's actually, let's take this little battery in there. So I've got hydrogen engines on there, I've got the O2H2 gen, the tanks, where's my batteries over here, I've got the gyros up on one. So I'm actually, I feel like I'm getting a pretty good collection of them here. I possibly need one for my little antennas because I've got two of them over here now, but I was going to put all of the singular blocks just in a pile here and then they'll get sorted onto all of the pallets afterwards. Uh, later. Rather than trying to do it all at once. When I don't actually know if I need to have a pallet for each of these blocks. Because a lot of these blocks probably don't need one. Okay, this is going to be tricky. <laughs> this is probably one of the more awkward things I've tried to grab with my crane and that I'm going to be trying to put in a very specific position. Let's unfold and see how well I can do this. I want to grab it on that thin edge. Preferably probably grabbing the middle one, I guess. That'll make it easier to control when I need to use the little hinges and little rotors at the end to do the rotation. Okay, I have control of the solar panels. Okay. Oh, this is... Oh. <laughs> I think this is going to require me actually driving to get into the right position because I don't have any ability to move the elbow in another direction. Hmm. If I spin that right through... That's actually not far from where I need to be. Straighten it up. Then I can just 
Oh, get it there, then drop it down. Bring it back up a bit, and I'll put the merge blocks on, and I'll build them and see if I can get it to just snap. Anyway, it looks like it's going to be quite a big distance away from where I need it to be, but you never know your luck sometimes. Oh, perfect. It's actually around the right way. I was really worried this was going to be... <laughs> this was going to be the... Uh, at the top edge of its box, rather than the bottom edge. Which would have meant that I had to flip it around to full 180. Okay, just got to get these merge blocks aligned. Have some solar panels. I wonder if I'll survive this. Oh yeah, no damage at all. It's kind of close. <laughs> it's kind of close. Oh, it's there! Hey! <laughs> nice! Ah, good. Very good, very good, very good, very good. So that's done. And then get that battery off. Back like this. Yep, this one. This has no solar cells in it. Right. I guess I'll see if I manage to find a solar cell or two and whether that'll be something I can repair or whether it's always going to be a bit of a broken awning. Now I have done something a bit odd with the awning, which is that it doesn't cover the doorway. <laughs> the solar awning reaches everywhere but the doorway. <laughs> Happy to have it offloaded into a at least vaguely useful spot. Next thing to clean up before anyone comes to visit is going to be all of this stuff over here. Got to clean all these trucks up. Which thankfully with my tier 3, with my top tier grinder is actually really quite quick. I'm also going to be trying to do a bit of a better job of keeping this place tidy all the time anyway because it does make it a bit less likely that... Oh, I just ground down a battery. Oh well. Whoops. Probably wanted that. Ah. So, lesson learned. When I am grinding down these wrecks, take the valuable blocks out first. Take them out before you go crazy with the top tier grinder. I'm not too worried about the loss of that battery because I do have... Two batteries on the forklift that can be repurposed somewhere else. And the battery that's on the back of the Flatliner right now. So I've still got three full, uh, the full size small grid batteries lying around that I haven't purposed, I haven't set to some specific purpose yet. So I'm probably okay on the battery front. At least until I can think through what I want it to do with them. I do think that helicopter is going to be the answer. I'm seeing a problem with this style of scrapping. I have to pick up every little piece. <laughs> if I leave this sort of stuff around a long way from my base, it'll just get cleaned up automatically. But if I do it here, I have to clean it up because it won't get cleaned up. I don't really want to have to do that cleanup. I don't think I'll be bring. I don't think I'm going to bring many of these vehicles home. Like, unless I've got a plan, a specific plan in mind for the vehicle, like I'm going to repair it or do something, I'm not bringing it home to scrap. I'll take what I want in the field and leave it. Because I don't want to have to do all this every time. <laughs> I think it also, I mean, ignoring the things that I've missed while out and about, it also probably makes it a bit less likely that I'm going to grind off something that I didn't want to grind off because I'll be in that mindset at the time. Obviously, there'll be still some situations where I do bring something home because I'll be just quickly grabbing something with my crane and don't have anywhere to store it. So it's easier to just grab the whole thing. I've just got to carry the rest of these blocks around and inside, the ones that I can carry anyway. I'm emptying out the oxygen tank to see if um, I can carry it once it's empty. Because I don't need to keep the oxygen. I can refill it easily from the vents that I've got. Oh, did I damage that? Has that got anything in it? I damaged that when I was doing that. Oh, it's empty. Um, I haven't found a big tank, so I'm just going to keep it. That might have already been damaged. I'm not sure whether I damaged that after. Hmm. But with this stuff cleaned up, I can actually take a real hard look at the base and try and figure out where this sort of arena, or at least one of the arenas, could be. Still don't know what to do with the drills. 
hold this back up. Hopefully it's now empty. It is empty. Is it now light enough to move? Yes. I just had it in such a weird... Like, where it was located was going to be very, very difficult to get the telehandler to. And I was curious whether I could move it once I'd emptied it. It felt like a strange thing to do to deliberately empty a tank. It's over in the single block area. There we go. Since I didn't actually manage to get to any of the arena sort of building, I thought what I'd talk about is a couple of the ideas I had for some of the competitions with it. So one of them was to give people things like this, which are round plates, and ask them to stack them as high as they can. So you've got, I don't know, say seven of them, eight of them, ten of them, and stack them as high as you can in one minute. That's the competition. Just simple, simple little things like this. Because I think we could possibly have some fun with that. Oh, I can hamster wheel it. Kind of. <laughs> Grab and pull. Grab and pull. Grab. 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 Nope. Doesn't like me anymore. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, I, little things like that was what I was imagining when I was thinking about this. Because I didn't want to do um, any sort of full-on races. I wanted to do time trial stuff. Stuff that we could repeat and we could have quickest time to something. So if I set up 10 of these Energy. and people manage no. to stack them all on top of each other in a minute, then we do it. How quickly can you do it? Sort of thing. Although a minute seems a bit short. Probably needs to be like three minutes or something. But yeah, if you've got any ideas that you think could work along those sorts of lines, let me know, because then I'll start thinking about how much space I need to set out for these. Because what I think I'm going to do is build sort of maybe some bridges or build something that connects to my base so that we've got power, but build it away out here on the lake bed to keep all of the competition clear of my base. Because if something clangs out, <laughs> I'd like to keep my stuff, safe, my stuff safe, but I'd also still like my base to be visible in the background, so I don't want it to be too far away, but I also don't want it to be too close. But yeah, I'll come up with a few better ideas of competition things that we could do, and hopefully in the next week or two, uh, we'll be able to see how I go at those things and then see how other people do and how quickly they manage to beat me. So there's all that and plenty more to come. And I will see you then.